bent swords, lost detail, mold lines and artifacts. This can't be fun to paint, right? When we resin print something or buy a model kit for a game like Warhammer, we're expecting high quality minis with great detail that'll be fun to paint. So why is this the official line of the most readily available miniatures for D&D? Why is this okay? And that's not a dig, that is a genuine question. Like, there must be a reason they keep making these, right? They're cheap-ish, I suppose, so maybe it's alright that they're not perfect. But then again, comparing that to resin printing, where a miniature overall might cost you about the same in material, or a miniature from somewhere like Archon Studios that do third-party minis designed to work with D&D, they're way better, and often a lot cheaper. So today I want to have a bit of a look, I want to paint a few, I want to compare, and I want to see if I can figure out why these are the most readily available and most official miniatures for D&D. I'm not going for display pieces here, just a nice quick paint job that'll get these ready for the table in half an hour to an hour. Painted for combat, you could say. Starting with a vibrant green for the spell sword's coat, followed by a 50-50 mix of blue speed paint with water for the pants, and then some brown for his undercoat, boots, and hair. Some flesh tone for the face, and finally an undiluted blue for the spell effect. Before doing a quick dry brush of some of the lighter colours over the model. Admittedly, this model is quite well thought out. The areas of detail here don't have a bunch of tiny details you need to pick out, so you can just drop in big blocks of colour across the model. Which is great when you're using something like speed paint trying to get these painted up fast. And looking across some of the other WizKids models I have sitting on my shelves, they're actually all very similar in this regard, but that could just be the 7 or 8 that I have here. My first impression of these is that they are meant to be painted fast. Something like speed paint is perfect for this, with the caveat that some of the detail is going to be lost in the casting process. This model is a good example of this. The details on the face are very soft, and even have some mold imperfections in those areas. So the speed paints really don't have much to pull from here, and if anything, they're kind of exaggerating the fact that the face is smooth and featureless. With our spell sword done, it's time to move on to our drow warrior from Bite the Bullet. Her skin is coated in a vibrant speed paint purple, her cloak in black, and her armor in various diluted mixes of black mixed with a few drops of brown, to give it some variation. And then for the various furs and hair on the model, I'll give these a dark wash, followed by a couple layers of highlights. I think the biggest thing I noticed painting this model compared to the WizKids immediately is the heroic scale that it's sculpted in. And you'll find this a lot across 3D printed miniatures and model kits. This more heroic scale that increases the size of features like faces and hands that allow you to really capture details in those areas. She's roughly the same height as our WizKids mini, and she doesn't feel shorter even though her face and hands are almost twice the size. She still feels like she's between 5 and 6 feet tall, but we can actually see her facial expression, and it goes without saying that the detail of a 3D printed miniature will always surpass that of a WizKids Mini. A 3D printed mini isn't limited to the same casting and moulding process of a plastic mini like this. Next up, we have a bear from the deep, from Archon Studios' recent World of Delslayer Kickstarter. I'm not sure if this is the intended proxy, but I'm going to be painting this up as a bargeist. I'm not sure how to pronounce that but they're these cool goblinoid shapeshifters. Anyway, this model is a plastic kit. It was clipped off a sprue and glued together. This model was around four pieces that I had to fit together before I hit it with the same primer as the others. He gets a black speed paint on his fur, then a diluted black mix with a tiny bit of brown for his exposed body, with some flesh tone dotted on while it's still wet on the knees and elbows. Then the skin got a nice light skin tone mixed with a tiny bit of brown. Off-white for the eyes, fangs, and claws, and a few dots of red for the scars across his body. Plastic kits are by far the best when it comes to quality and detail in a miniature. And when you're getting those minis from somewhere like Games Workshop or Archon Studios, you know they're going to be great sculpts. My favourite part about sprue kits is how easy they are to customise. This might not be the best example, this is a monopose model, but Many plastic kits come with optional arms or different weapon variations for your minis, and when you don't use all of those for a single model, it's very easy to kit bash these. And this is what I want to see with minis, these highly detailed, highly modular kits that are easy to customise as you see fit. And you get a little bit of this with 3D printing. 
Some sculptors will allow different weapon options for their minis, but the mess and the cleanup and the process of resin printing isn't for everyone. Especially if you're like me and you live in a small apartment. I literally cannot resin print at the moment. So I would love to see more plastic kits for D&D. And it actually seems that Dungeons and & Dragons and WizKids might agree. Frameworks are WizKids' newest line of minis, made out of the same polystyrene plastic as Warhammer and Archon Studios. And this is a great step in the right direction. These look like well-sculpted, well-thought-out kits that have a little bit of modularity and customization to them. They give you the torso and legs for these minis, and usually include one or two different weapon options and a couple of different faces. But the biggest issue for me, at least locally, is the price. One of these Framework Series minis goes for $25, almost twice the price of a WizKids blister pack, which usually contains two. And forget getting something like a Beholder, 70 bucks, whereas its ready to paint version is 20? It doesn't add up. Especially when you compare it to something like a box of Space Marines that come out at maybe $10 a model. And they often have more options in those boxes than we're seeing with the Framework minis. Even all of these boxes from Archon's Kickstarter. I mean, this cost me $700, but the contents of the boxes? That works out to almost a dollar a mini. And that's including some of the gargantuan minis that they've got in here. Even if you're buying Archon minis retail, they're only going for a few dollars a mini when you actually break down the price of these boxes. And some of these are multipose with different weapon options. So what I would really love to see is Frameworks minis at a slightly lower price, but include a few in a box. I would be more than happy to pay a hundred bucks for a box that contained 12 mini sprues. Let's say one for each core class with a few different weapon options, a few different faces. I think that'd be great. I'd buy that so quick for using with PCs or NPCs. It would just be so much fun to build and paint. But I get it. The pre-assembled minis are the go-to because they're approachable. They're cheap, they're easy to paint, and they're available at most game stores. That said, it's nice to see that WizKids and D&D have noticed the surge in popularity among mini painting. It's great to see them stepping into this ring, trying to put out these high quality plastic kits to rival things like Warhammer and Archon Studios. It's going to take a couple more series worth of frameworks until they've got a nice diverse set of minis here, and I do think the price is going to continue to be a problem. These are officially licensed minis, so inherently there's some extra cost to that. But with that said, I would still like to maybe see them come down to match something closer to Warhammer. Overall, my takeaway is the pre-assembled, ready-to-paint minis are great if you are a D&D enthusiast, if you just want some models to put on the table when it comes to game night. But if you're like me and you want your minis to look really nice, even if it's a quick paint job, Something like Frameworks, Archon, or even some Age of Sigma minis might be the better bet. But if you're just looking for a quick character or creature that you don't mind if it doesn't look great, downfalls aside, these models will do the job. Like and subscribe, and as always, have a good one.